You know, just stay ready. That's the biggest thing. We can't um, waste this time. At some point, you're going to have to play, so you just have to be ready for that. Jerome McKinley Jarrell Henderson Jr., born December 9, 1987. Besides the people in Charlotte that called him names like Noby Bryant or Kmart Kobe, others really thought Jarrell Henderson was going to be the next Kobe Bryant before he entered the NBA. And you know what? They weren't far off in their comparison because as many would admit, he did favor Kobe in basketball mannerism and the way he moved on the court and his game clearly said his favorite player was Kobe Bryant or Kobe's idol Michael Jordan. It's a comparison you'd love to have as a draft prospect that teams salivated over just the thought of Jordan 3.0. I think the confusion comes when people think if you say that, then you're expecting the same results from his career as Kobe, but really they only meant in what his game looks like in quick spurts. People also called Chris Middleton Kobe or Rondé Hollis Jefferson because visually the similarities to the eyes and moments were present. Safe to say Gerald Henderson did not become the next Kobe, averaging a career-high 15.5 points per game in 2012-13 or 11 points per game for his career. One that lasted only 8 seasons and ended because his body was continually failing him. Ironic because his body failing him was the last thing you would think would end Gerald Henderson's career back when he was an amateur and physically advanced far beyond his peers. As an athlete, he was a different story. As far as physical appearance on the court, Henderson looked like Kobe on that level because he was an elite athlete and could literally do anything he wanted to, ending in top 15 ranking leaving high school, scholarship to the most prestigious basketball school of all time that only recruits the best of the best, leaving early for the NBA draft and being selected as a lottery pick, one spot up from where Kobe was selected way back in the day. The Charlotte Bobcats was a new replacement franchise bought in 2002, announced the following year, and played their first games in 04-05 and had yet to make the playoffs in five years before Henderson got there. They were gravely in the market for a superstar talent, even a star talent they could throw all their advertisement behind and at least fill the seats for their fairly new arena and lead their fairly new franchise to prominence or at least permanence. Henderson, coming out of Kobe's admitted selected school had he went to college, came in with a lot of expectations to be that guy. If only he could add this or that to his game. What happened to the next Kobe Bryant, Cheryl Henderson? Salute to 47.tm on IG for this request. It's your boy JC Stunning Growth. Let's get it, man. Take a minute to like, subscribe, and comment on who I should do next. Gerald Henderson Jr., the son of a former three-time NBA champion, was a 6'5 shooting guard from Caldwell, New Jersey that, like Kobe, has high school basketball roots in Pennsylvania. Before then, his parents taught him golf and he became all-league and champion in track and field, specifically for the high jump and triple jump competitions. Beyond that, Gerald Henderson had the high school basketball career you wanted back then. He averaged 18 points and 8 rebounds as a freshman, led his team to a state championship as a junior, rated the third best shooting guard behind his teammate Wayne Ellington and Daquan Cook, winning the Gatorade Player of the Year twice for his state and became a McDonald's All-American headed to Duke his senior year. With those accolades, you can see why at that point the Kobe comparisons came flowing in because not just to the eyes, but on paper, their similar pedigree also gave credence to the fans having such esteemed expectations. Stunt number one, overblown expectations. Let's start right here because had it not been for the Kobe comparison so early on, maybe Henderson's career could have been seen as solid considering the things that happened to him so soon. But the Kobe comparisons were just outlandish and unfair because who since has become the next Kobe? Only one man so far has been successful in truly cloning another player in game style and result and that's Kobe himself taking Michael Jordan's game and making it the 2000s version. Not to say Gerald Henderson didn't unknowingly bring those on himself because his path was so similar to what Kobe did or even what he would have done if not for his all-time great talent advancement. 
Henderson went to college obviously because he had to due to the newly implemented NBA eligibility rules and because talent-wise it was clear he still needed development in some areas. While Kobe was also a few inches taller than the listed 6'5 Henderson, he also had all the fundamental skills that Gerald Jr. never developed. Basketball was in Henderson's blood. His dad was a former NBA player that won three championships and played 13 years. It explains why Gerald Jr. naturally moved and physically had the gifts of a professional at such a young age. But Kobe had that thing you just can't teach, even though his dad was a former NBA player as well. He just wanted to be the best. So he had all the fundamentals, all the moves off the dribble, and from anywhere on the court for that matter, and continued to make life about playing basketball. Which is why he had a 20-year career. Henderson was missing first off the mentality that he was that guy, that killer instinct or what they call dog nowadays in him to amount to the expectations. This led to him averaging under 10 points a game his first few seasons in the NBA even after being a starter halfway through his second year. He had the elite athleticism, mannerisms, just not the instinct like Kobe or even comparable and lacked the fundamentals to develop into those expectations. He was otherwise a solid role player Charlotte attempted to make a star, but he just wasn't. Stun number two, lack of important skills. For the shooting guard position, historically it's always been one that's the most versatile. Shooting guards do a little of every position's job as you can see them bring the ball up and run the offense like a point guard, run the wing and slash like small forwards, and rebound and post up like fours and fives from time to time. The elite are great at doing all those things, and not to keep bringing this up, but it's the biggest difference in Kobe's level of success versus anyone ever compared to him. The two most important missed skills at least on an NBA level was Gerald's shooting and lack of the ability to create using his ball handling for himself or teammates. Not that he was completely terrible in those areas, shooting 32% from 3 for his career and 46% on 2 point shots, just not as effective as a guy that becomes an all star on that level and carves out a dominant career. Gerald Henderson Jr. for the most part was a high flyer, a slasher with elite jumping ability and athletic potential to be a great wing defender and that's the role he molded into. Because he didn't have the moves off the dribble, footwork and deep shooting ability to make him a threat and open lanes for his drives, his career seems underwhelming. When you see a guy that talented as an athlete, naturally we as basketball fans envision what they could become if they were to add more to their game and Gerald Henderson was the poster child for that. You could see he had the tools already in his bag you can't teach but the ones you can, for some reasons, never developed in time. Stunt number three, hips don't lie. Hips don't lie. No, not those hips, but the ones on Gerald Henderson. <laughs> what did you mean? Bye. <laughs> that was crazy. Henderson's career was cut short early in his prime after having three surgeries to fix a troublesome hip that he'd never truly recover from. But before that, it was six surgeries in total that Henderson himself blames for his career not amounting to what it could have and ending much sooner than hoped. Surgeries on his wrists, three different hip surgeries, and an Achilles surgery from him tearing it in a pickup game in Golden State. The thing with injuries is it fights against the race of time when it comes to athletes. You only have a certain window to play at a high level because as all humans we get old and slower than we used to be two things that don't work in the NBA. Those injuries make it difficult to develop your game because they take so much time away from development opportunities like being in the gym and taking those worked on skills to the court. Being injured so much for Henderson kept him pretty much the same player for his career, which was an athletic wing, good enough to give you 10 to 15 points a night off straight athleticism and running the floor alone. But when the game became about recovering enough to just get on the floor for Henderson and not having the health to develop over the summer and work on new things, his production declined and he was traded to the Blazers. All in all, Gerald Henderson had an unfortunate career staying on the floor, but he made it to the highest level in his craft 
and at least lasted past his rookie four-year deal playing eight seasons. He finished with solid averages and for a three-year window, he looked like he could turn the corner and become an all-star. But injuries to his body, undocumented and the ones known, cut all that down way too soon. Very professional player that gave it his all, but his body failed him nearing his 30s and caused him to retire after his attempted Golden State comeback. Salute, much respect, but for these reasons, his growth was stunning. It's your boy JC Stunning Growth, and I'm out.